Hey there, I'm here with Cody and Craig from Michigan Rock Hounds and uh, we're hiking back to Montreal Falls and these two are spending the night back there and I'm hiking out because I don't have a backpack. Cody <laughs> has a front pack so I didn't know that was an option. One of us is an experienced camper and backpacker, one isn't. I'll let you guess which one it is. I wasn't told of these uh, plans. <laughs> So anyhow, we're gonna look for a few rocks along the way and uh, enjoy the beautiful scenery. There are a lot of thimble berries on the way in here. These are delicious little berries. Get one off here for you. There you go. They're really squishy. Uh, looks a lot like a raspberry. Doesn't taste just like a raspberry. It tastes different. They're delicious. Uh, my sister serve thimbleberry jam for breakfast the other morning. We've made it to the falls and it is absolutely beautiful here. We'll walk over the rocks here and get you a shot. We're heading across the falls to see if we can find some rocks on the other side. The theory being if it's hard to get to, there's probably good stuff there. What'd you discover? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> you win. <laughs> All right, Craig's a geologist, so he's going to tell us a little bit about the rock in the area here. So what are we looking at? All right, so what we're looking at here is basalt, Portage Lake Volcanics. Uh, these come from the Mid-Continent Rift when North America tried to split itself in half about 1.1 billion years ago. What's really interesting about these is you have these uh, veins of other material in here. They formed along cracks in the rock that uh, water flowed through, depositing minerals. And you have a mixture of different materials in here. You got some feldspar creating these pinks. You have some quartz in here. You also have some calcite. Quartz and calcite can often both look white. It can be hard to tell the difference. Uh, one key to, way to distinguish, uh, quartz when it breaks uh, will look glassy. It'll look like broken glass. Whereas calcite when it breaks will form cubes, or more accurately, uh, cubes that have just been tilted a little bit. So if you look in here, you'll see some examples of both. This is largely calcite, or largely quartz in here, but you will find a few calcite chunks mixed in. If you look here, that looks awfully blocky there. So that blocky bit is your calcite. This is quartz. That's not really important all the time, but it's a nifty little trick for telling the difference and making yourself look real knowledgeable. Or you carry a little acid with you and that'll help too, right? Exactly. Hydrochloric acid, vinegar, it'll, uh, the calcite will bubble up and the quartz will do nothing at all. Right. 
Cody just pointed out another way to tell. So what you got, Cody? So I have a piece of basalt here because basalt's much harder than calcite. Calcite's at about a 3.5 to 4, and uh, basalt, I believe, can range from a 5 to a 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scratch this, and because it scratches so easily, we know that this is calcite because uh, quartz is around a 6.5 to a 7. It, given a bit of approximation there, uh, it can vary, but it, this is hard enough to scratch this material, which says that this here is calcite. Yeah, we're in the woods on the other side of the falls, hopefully making our way to a huge pile of agates on the beach. We just scrambled down onto a nice little rocky beach that I'm sure is just chuck full of agates. Yeah, well, as beautiful as this beach is, no agates for us here. All right, it's getting dark now. Uh, well, it's not getting dark yet, but in about an hour it'll be dark. Mm -hmm. And Craig, thank you, told me about wolves Gotta that I'm up. walking out of here on my own, so now I'm running out of here like a little scaredy cat. So Gotta get out before the wolves chase you out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll leave the video in their hands and see what they find, and uh, I'll talk to you later, but they're going to still film. If you see us narrating future videos, it means the wolves got them. <laughs> <laughs> so as I'm running down here, uh, Craig is yelling at me that he found blue agate, and I'm like, what? <laughs> right as we left, he started yelling for us that he found agate after agate after agate. And he's talking about this blue agate, and well, I'm a little bit skeptical, so we're going to go check it out. So you're saying that <laughs> right when we left, you found agates, and you found a mysterious blue agate. So apparently, you guys are a hex. Cursed me not to find agates. You don't move more about 15 feet up the trail when this guy jumps right out at me. Oh, yeah. If you're catching the color on that. Yeah. Found a few other nice pieces. Got some uh, patricianite here. Interesting. Maybe fake Thompsonite. Uh, this will be agate here, but uh, and then this one doesn't have a lot of uh, translucency to it, but nice banding. But then uh, this guy's off the curious here. Don't you say? Yeah, uh, interesting. Here, I don't know that it's it. agate, but it appears to have banding and it's blue and green. Looks almost like a really broken up greenstone. It's possible. Yeah, actually it does have greenstone modeling in there, so it could be greenstone. I think you just dropped one of them. You, you just dropped another. Or No, no that's no, just water. This is water. I got gravel falling off my knuckles here. I've been dragging my knuckles like a great ape looking for uh so you're going here. through this mixture here then yeah yeah the, the the nicest ones i found right next to my bag and as i made my way down the beach i haven't found a whole lot more really yeah uh, i'm about ready to wade out and seek our fortune in deeper waters well let's see how that fares for us yeah. So we're going to walk a little bit beyond this point here, or at least see how far beyond we can get without being consumed by Lake Superior. See what else we can find. Ooh, beautiful bands of uh, either calcite or quartz. I think that's quartz because it's protruding out. The uh, less hard material just kind of erodes away before the quartz does. But now we're going to go test these waters and see what we can find. Check this out. Uh, no beach yet, but we're getting there. This is really cool. All this basalt here. So Craig thinks he sees the bay we want. It's all the way over there. We're going to, ooh, <laughs> this does not bode well. Well, yeah, it's a little deep right there. Yeah, I definitely don't want to trek those waters. So we're gonna have to trek through this forest because we're not gonna be able to make it across that cliffside over there. It's really unfortunate. That area has potential, but not really interested in breaking my neck today.
And I'll tell you what, if you want freshly exposed rocks, look for a tree that's fallen over. Yeah. Like I said earlier, this is like one of the things where you'd expect to find copper protruding yeah, out because of the find, roots. If you're going to find float copper, look for it here. I'm sure we're not the first ones who walked by this. Oh, yeah. Don't want to know what's living in there. So I came about this hole here, and this is really unnatural. This actually, with the material that's in here, directly right there and right there, this was mined. Someone mined this, either Native American or, I don't know, someone came out here with a jackhammer one day on a boat and decided to tear it up. But that, that is a vein of something that once existed and it's now gone. I'm finding a lot of, a lot of this material throughout here. We're getting really close to the agate material. Very close. So we checked out this little mine here. Uh, Craig's not really sure what to make of it. I think, I think it looks very unnaturally uh, mined out, or that it was mined out by someone. Um, the way that it broke, and the way that there's like material that's protruding out that's different from the rest of it makes it seem like there was a particular mineral there that was uh, sought after and mined for. It's really interesting. Um, on that note though, and we unfortunately are gonna call it a day because the sun is getting a little bit low. So we're gonna make our way out. We unfortunately couldn't get to the trail, but yeah, I guess that's a wrap. We made it to within 50 yards of the beach we were going for, but it was gonna take us another 20 minutes to get there and we probably only have another 45 minutes of sunlight. We gotta get back to our campsite. So yeah. sometimes even when you come close, you gotta know when to call it a day. Yeah. So Craig has chosen to uh, swim the rest of the way. I'm taking the trail that we took here, but <laughs> take a look at this. How you doing down there? Honestly, I'm way more comfortable down here than I would be up there, I think. <laughs> it's actually quite relaxing. I imagine.